guys, welcome to Coffee and Bible Time. My name is Ashley, if you haven't met me yet. I just wanna thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking out Coffee and Bible Time. Welcome to the family. If you're new here, we've been getting a lot of new subscribers and I just wanna say, I love you and you are so welcome here. And I love you to all the people who've been with Coffee and Bible Time for a long time too. So today I'm kind of just wearing a comfy sweatshirt because we're all in quarantine and I thought why not be a little comfy. But today is the first day I put makeup on in like weeks. It's been a long time and it feels kind of nice to get a little dressed up. How have you guys been holding up in this quarantine? Let me know in the comments down below. Has it been hard? Has it been easy? I wanna know what you guys are going through right now so I can be praying for you. Let's support each other in the comments down below. This is a community. This is a time where we can connect together and be friends. So today's video is going to be an interactive Bible study. I really want you guys to get out your Bibles, just relax, take, some time to be alone with you and God. Go into your room, shut the door, get out your Bible, get out your journal, get out your pens. This is when I wanna mention that I've been using these new pens that I got. Oh, uh, this isn't a pen, that's a colored pencil. Well, um, yeah, I've been using the, okay, well, I've been using these new pens that I got from Arteza. Arteza actually sent us a lot of art products. Arteza is my favorite art company. They are amazing. And so we're gonna be doing a video with a lot of their products coming soon. But I started using these um, pen colored, they're called Twee Markers, water-based ink. And they are double-sided and I, I'm gonna be using these in the Bible study today. So if you guys want to check these out, I'll have them linked in the description box. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna be an interactive Bible study. There's gonna be times where I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and read the passage or reflect or pray, and I want you guys to actually do that. So I'd encourage you to take out your Bible, your Bible app, get into a quiet area so that you can study your Bible and come to know Jesus and delight in him. So along with this video, there is a printable that you can go check out on coffeeandbibletime.com last shop. I'll have it linked down below. So the printable is just in general going to be the easy Bible study, how to do the easy Bible study, going through John 6. And so I'd highly encourage you guys to get the printable if you want to have an interactive way on how to go through the easy Bible study with John 6. This video, I will just briefly go through E-A-S-Y with you guys through John 6. But if you guys want the full thing, I'd really encourage you to get the printable so that you can go deeper into John 6 with me. If you're wondering what is this easy method, I'd encourage you guys to go check out my last video on the easy Bible study method, E-A-S-Y, and it is just a method on how to study the Bible, an easy way to study the Bible. Again, this is for those of you who are struggling with reading your Bible, you're new to reading your Bible, you wanna switch things up, and I really want to stress that for those of you who are, who are who have been following the Lord for a few few years now or you're stronger in your faith, please start discipling someone. Please get a friend who is newer in their faith or just starting to come to know the Lord and teach them how to study their Bibles, teach them how to read. And the easy Bible study method literally was designed for discipling so that you can bring someone along with you and teach them how you study your Bible. That is Jesus' heart for the world, for Christians to be discipling. You and I, we can do this, we can disciple. So I would highly encourage you to do this study, to do the easy Bible study method with a friend or someone younger than you. I mean, heck, they can be older too, it don't matter. But someone who wants to learn how to follow Jesus, bring them along with you. So sorry for all those details. Let's get right into the video. Hey guys, so let's open our Bibles to John 6. John is in the New Testament. I am so excited to be studying with you guys today. What a blessing. So today we're gonna be doing the easy Bible study method. Let's start off by focusing on E. E stands for 
enter. So we are entering into the Bible passage. So for this, we're going to read the text and we're going to try to put ourselves in the story. We must remember that the Bible wasn't necessarily written to us in our generation. There was an original author, an original audience. So the original author is John. If you guys don't know who John is, he is one of Jesus' disciples. And disciple just means someone who followed Jesus around and Jesus taught John and 11 others. So John was actually one of Jesus' closest disciples and he wrote John in the New Testament, which is amazing. And then the original audience who John is writing to is Jewish unbelievers. So he is writing to unbelievers who especially Jewish unbelievers who didn't believe in Jesus. And John wants to show them that Jesus was actually the true messiah he is the true messiah and so that is why john is writing to them and i want to give you a little bit of background information this was john wrote this after the cross after jesus's resurrection this is written after all that happened and john is giving an account of what happened of of what it looked like when jesus walked on earth and so john is writing this this letter when Christianity was first starting to spread. And so that is very important to remember as you're reading through John and even as you're reading through John 6, we're reading stories of Jesus's life from an eyewitness and John is the eyewitness. So let's read through John 6 right now. So I encourage you guys to pause the video right here, open your Bible to John 6 and Remember that for E, we're entering into the story. You, I want to encourage you to read it with a childlike faith. So don't bring your presuppositions into the text. Just read the text for what it is and read it with a childlike faith and wonder like you're listening to a story as if you were seven year, years old and your mom was reading the story to you. So pause the video here and read through the story. Wasn't that story amazing, you guys? I love the three stories, the Jesus feeding the 5,000, Jesus walking on water, and then him talking about how he's the bread of life. It's just so good. So now we're going to specifically focus on John 6, 22 through 59. And so I'm just going to close up my Bible here and take out the passage on this paper so that you can see it a little bit more as I study. This is actually the printable and... I'll just show you a little bit here. Yeah, this is the printable. And right now we're going to be going through A. And A stands for assess. Assess the main idea and themes of the passage. So this is the point of the Bible study where you get to, okay, what is jumping out to me? What is the main theme? What is repeated over and over again? And obviously today we're going to be studying the main theme of bread. So that's what a assess is all about, is just looking for the main themes of the passage. Do you like my little drawing? It's really ratchet. <laughs> okay, so here we are on the scripture part of the printable, and I want to show you guys that this first time I'll be reading it through, we want to focus on bread, manna, and food. So I have my yellow highlighter, and I'm going to highlight every time bread, manna, or food shows up. I'm using the Arteza pen. And so that is what I'm going to be focusing on in this passage. And as you read through, I would encourage you to also highlight any time bread shows up so you'll see as i go the next day the crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat and they realized jesus had not gone with them several boats from tiberius landed near the place where the lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten so when the crowd saw that neither jesus nor his disciples were there they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. 
You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, We want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. They answered, Show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do after all our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness? The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me even though you've seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God that I should not lose one, even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should, never, should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, Stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me, and at the last day I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will be all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me, not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I, who was sent from God, have seen. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life, yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread of heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I live because of the Father, of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that comes down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Before we dive into the bread of life a little bit more, that theme, I want to ask you guys, are there any other repetitions or themes in this passage? That's what Assess is all about. Let's look through the passage and see what stands out to you, what is repeated over and over again, what happens in this passage what's going on what are the themes what are the main ideas in this passage like 
why did John write this? What is he trying to get across? So I want you to pause the video and for yourself, look through this passage and try to find more of the themes, more of the repetitions, just like we just did with bread. And I am going to do this in the next part of the video and show you how I do this. But before that, I really want you to do this on your own and look through the passage yourself so that you can glean from God's word for yourself. So now that you've gone through the passage and you've tried to find themes that John was trying to communicate through his writing, I want to show you some of the themes that I found, the first one being eternal life, and I'll just read to you some of the highlights. Verse 27, but don't be concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. 29, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. 30, to believe, and then... 36, but you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. 40, for it is my father's will that all who see his son and believe in him have eternal life. Verse 47, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Verse 50, for, ha! Verse 50 anyone who eats the bread from heaven will never die. He will live forever. Verse 53, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life. Eternal life. 58, anyone who eats this bread will not die as, as your ancestors did, but will live forever. This was one of the biggest themes I found and it stood out to me so much. I'm going to be going through this a little more further on in the video, so stay tuned for that. The next theme I found was, I tell you the truth. Jesus saying, I tell you the truth. Other versions sometimes say, truly, truly, I tell you. And I really, I really noticed this and this stood out to me because it reminded me that Jesus is gracious enough to speak the truth to these unbelieving Jews. He is clearly speaking the truth and says this over and over, but, but they are not willing to hear and they are not willing to listen. But it just reminded me of God's goodness, Jesus' character, and his graciousness and patience of telling the truth to those who wouldn't even listen, listen and giving them a chance even though they had hard hearts. So the next theme I found and that stood out to me was, I have come down from heaven, come down from heaven. Jesus said this over and over again, and I think it's very important because to the original audience and to the Jews, this was a huge thing that Jesus was saying, that he came down from heaven. It was just unreal and a claim that no one made. And just as the manna came down from heaven to feed and sustain the Israelites in the wilderness, if you're not familiar with that story, that's from Exodus 16. I'd encourage you guys to read that. It's how God provided for them in the wilderness. Um, but just as the wilderness came from heaven, so God sent Jesus from heaven to give the life to the world. The manna in the wilderness was lesser because those who ate it eventually died. Jesus, on the other hand, is the bread of life. Those who partake in Jesus will live in him forever. The original audience, the Jews, they knew this story very well. And so Jesus is using a very clear picture to tell them, I am greater than Moses. I am greater than the manna. I am the bread of life. So the next truth I found that I felt like John was trying to communicate was for no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. It is clear in this passage that it is only through a work of God that we can come to believe in him. It is through the power of God drawing us near, opening our eyes and softening our hearts to see him. And I believe that if you're watching this video right now, you are someone who God is try trying to draw near, even in this moment. And what a gracious God we serve that he would look on us and want to draw us near. Another theme I found in this passage was will. Jesus always doing the Father's will. Many times Jesus mentions that he is doing his Father's will. And it shows that Jesus and God, the Father, are one. And it's just beautiful how... 
connected they were and how everything that Jesus did, he did through the Father. And lastly, another huge repetition from this passage was Jesus saying that um, the Father will raise them up on the last day. Jesus promises that those who believe in him will be raised up on the last day. He reminds them that there is more to life than just the perishable things like food that we can see. We must fix our eyes on Jesus and eat of the bread of life and remember that this life we're living in right now is temporary. Instead of clinging to this world, we must cling to Jesus and his promise that we will be raised to new life with him and that this world is not our home and that one day we will be with him in perfection on the new earth in heaven. What hope there is to cling on to. That is a huge hope and beautiful truth. And lastly, what I did in the A assess section is, and I would encourage you to do the same, is I read through the passage again and just went through and really just tried to seek out the main theme. What was the main thing? theme John wanted his original readers to know? And as I was reading through it, I noticed just over and over again and especially this statement this is the only work god wants from you believe in the one he has sent to believe to believe to believe he is the true bread of life he is the true bread he is the bread of life he even says jesus says i am which is a huge claim he says i am am i give life to the world like all these claims are huge he says those who come to me will never be hungry all who see and believe in me should have eternal life like the claims jesus were making were huge and he says the same thing over and over again but it's a hard truth to understand and even later on in the in this um john 6 or john 7 it says all these truths this truth was hard for people to grasp and a lot of his followers left him but eventually peter says lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life and it's true and as i was reading through this over and over it says those who believe in me will have eternal life those who eat this bread will live forever like those who eat my flesh will live forever which is crazy it's so it sounds so weird but essentially what jesus is saying is that i am life he says i am the true life and to to eat the bread you get life and so essentially eating if eating gives life then eating is equivalent to believing and believing in jesus is truly living it gives you life it is eternal life it is satisfaction and fullness jesus is just giving us a metaphor and saying just like we eat bread to live so you eat me or believe in me in order to have true life he's saying i am greater than moses i am greater than the manna i am the true bread of life and so the main theme out of assess i got was believe in jesus and you will have life that is the simple truth of this passage so now we're getting on to s in the easy bible study method and s stands for seek god so we want to look at who is god in this passage what are his characteristics and attributes and specifically jesus since jesus is the son of god and he is in the trinity he is god and so who is jesus in this passage and and going back to the main theme Jesus says who he is in this passage, which is so cool that we can hear straight from God who he is. He says, I am the true bread of life. And now remember what I'm telling you, you guys, is that we need to put ourselves in the original audience's shoes. What does bread mean to them? Bread was a staple in the Jewish Mediterranean diet. I mean, their lives revolved around bread. Harvesting bread, making bread, eating bread, everything was bread. Like, bread was in 
all the meals. And so bread was what their life revolved around. Like, that was what sustained them. That's what filled them. That's what would be in their heads when they were hungry, was bread, bread, bread. And even a lot of times in the Bible, when you see bread, in general, it means food. So... That's what I'm writing right here is bread equals food. So as you're reading this passage, you can even see it as Jesus saying, I am the food of life. I am food. I am what gives you sustenance. I am what what fills you up. I am what sustains you, what fills you, what satisfies you, what renews you. I need food to live, and that's what I made this list here for. I put food dot dot dot. It sustains me, fills me, satisfies me, renews me. I need it to live. And I want to encourage you to list out some more characteristics or attributes of food in your life. Like, what what role does food play in your life? And I know this is a weird question, but I really want you to make a list and think about this is what role does food play in your life like if you went without food what would happen how often do you eat food why do you eat food just think about this and ponder it how did your list making go i hope it went good now i want to connect this to you to jesus and show you that that list you made you can connect it to Jesus. Maybe not all the metaphors will work, but let me show you this. So food sustains me. Jesus sustains me. Food fills me. Jesus fills me. Food satisfies me. Jesus satisfies me. Jesus renews me. I need Jesus to live just like I need food to live, to keep me going, to refresh me, to satisfy me. And as you can see here on this list I made in the printable, I did the same thing. Jesus keeps me alive. Jesus gives me life. When without Jesus, I would die. Jesus keeps me going, etc., 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 etc. And just how just like food, just like we need food, just like we need it, so do we need Jesus. And so that's why I'm coming back to this main point, this simple truth. In the same way that food is essential to life, so is Jesus to our spiritual life. And we have to remember that we have to come back to this daily. So now that we've done S, seek God's character, again, you guys are in control of your own Bible study. If you want to spend more time on any category or if you want to spend time in prayer in any of the categories, then definitely do that. Pause the video. Take as much time as you need. There are so many more characteristics of God in this passage that you can see from this. I just touched on one. So now we're getting into why, which is yearn. So for this part of the Bible study, this is the part that is my absolute favorite part. And it's coming before Jesus, sitting at his feet and yearning for him. Yearn means to have an intense feeling of longing for something. And it's a time where you can come before Jesus and realign your heart with his and tell him how much you need him. Tell him how much you want him. Tell him how this reading is how you want it to change you and how you want him to change your heart. And I would encourage you guys to open your Bibles to Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I really want to encourage you guys to just come before Jesus and pray and Tell him that you want him to be your bread. Tell him you want him to be your everything. Tell him that you want him to satisfy you. If you haven't been satisfied by him, have you come to him and asked him to satisfy you? Have you asked him to help you to come back to him daily, morning and night? Ask him. It's as simple as that. And I think we forget about that in Bible study. We forget that it's not just about us reading the Bible to try to get 
what we can to change our own hearts. It's just, it's, that's not what it's about. It's not about us trying to change our own hearts. It has to be about us coming, wanting to learn more about God and humbly asking him to change our hearts that we might look more like his, humbly asking us to, to give us a yearning for him. And so I just pray that you would find joy in his presence, that you would be satisfied. And I just pray that you would get on your knees in prayer and that you would seek him. We need to be a generation that is seeking him, you guys. We must seek him. It comes down to that. And that's what why means. That's what yearn is. And so that's what the easy Bible study is all about. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this video was encouraging to you and just helped you dig deeper into God's word. What a blessing it is to be here with you guys right now and to encourage you. And I just pray that during this season, whether it's easy or hard or new or different or things are just not what you expected them to be. I just pray that Jesus would be the bread of life for you and that you would come back to him to be filled, to be satisfied, to be renewed, and um, that you would realize that no matter what season you're in, you still have him, the bread, the bread of life. You still have truth, you still have Jesus in this season, and he can be your rock, he can be your everything. And so I just pray that you would start to see him as your bread and that he could meet and fulfill your every need. And so yeah, that's my prayer for you guys today. I love you, hope this video encouraged you, and let me know what you think in the comments. I love hearing your guys' thoughts and things, just so I know. I should keep uh, doing things like this. So let me know. Love you guys. Bye.